Once you have downloaded your data to a USB drive, you can now download that data to your computer to view it. Begin by inserting your USB drive into your computer. Windows should automatically ask you what you would like to do, or your USB will automatically open like I have here. If it asks you what to do, make sure to click on Open Folder to View Files, and it will take you to this folder. Once you're at this folder, find the only file on your USB or the one that looks similar to this one and double click to open it. Microsoft Excel should open it automatically, but if it doesn't, right click on the file, go to Open With, and then choose Excel. Once you have your spreadsheet open, you'll see four columns of data. P1 and P2 represent the probes connected to your excursion track at the time of the recording. In this case, I only had one probe connected to my excursion track, and it was connected in the P1 slot. Time indicates what time it was in military time when your excursion track thermometer stored the temperature reading. And date indicates the month, day, and year in that order that the temperature reading was stored. For example, my last reading was March the 2nd, 2015. As you begin to scroll down your spreadsheet, you may feel overwhelmed by the amount of data the traceable excursion track can observe and record. Not to worry though, with Microsoft Excel we can apply filters to your columns so that you can only see the data you want to see. Let's go through two examples to get you reading your data efficiently and as quickly as possible. First, let's start by filtering our spreadsheet to only show what happened on one day. In this case, my traceable excursion track thermometer began storing data on February the 26th, 2015 until March the 2nd, 2015. For this example, I only want to view the data that was stored on February the 27th, 2015. To do this, first select column D. This will select the entire column. Next, go up above and select the Data tab, and then Find Filter. Click on that. Once you click Filter, a small box will appear under column D. This small box indicates that a filter has been applied for this column and we can begin filtering. Click on this box to open it, and towards the bottom you will see a list of values. These values indicate all the values currently on column D. We're going to deselect all of them, and then manually select the date we're looking for so that only one remains. Since the data we're looking for is was stored on February 27, 2015, we're going to expand the 2015 box to show the months. And then we're going to expand the February box to show the days. We'll click on 27th, and then click OK. Once you have done this, Microsoft Excel will automatically filter out every other option except the one you chose. So now we're looking at all the data that was stored only on February 27, 2015. If for any reason your data shows up with a lot of pound signs, go to the end of that column and double click until it turns back to normal. For our next and final filter, I'm going to demonstrate how to filter our results to only view the temperature recordings that occurred on February 27, 2015, but this time only between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. Let's get started. First, we're going to make sure all filters are removed from the spreadsheet. To do this, go to the Filter button and click it. Next, we're going to need to apply a filter to both column C and column D. To do this, left-click on column C, and while continuing to hold your left-click, hover over column D until both columns are selected. Once you've done this, go back to Filter and click it one more time. Now a filter box will be underneath both column C and column D. Just like before, we're going to filter column D to only show February 27th, 2015. So make sure to deselect all of them, expand February, and click 27. Now let's make column C only display between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. Click on the filter box under column C and you'll notice that there are hundreds of more choices than column D had. Clicking on each individual minute between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. would take a very long time. So instead, we're going to use a number filter. Choose between. Since we're looking for the data between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m., where it says greater, we're going to insert 12 p.m. military time. And then where it says less than, we're going to insert 1 p.m. in military time, which is 13. Once you have done this, column C and column D will be both filtered together showing only temperature ranges that occurred on February 27th, 2015, between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. A feature your spreadsheet can contain is the last 10 alarm events that occurred on your excursion track thermometer. These will automatically display above your data if at any time your environment's temperature exceeded your high alarm or your low alarm set alarms. Probe indicates which probe went out of range. Temperature indicates the alarm set point that was triggered. Time out indicates what time the environment's temperature went out of the alarm range. Date out means what day the alarm occurred. Time in indicates what time the alarm returned from being out. And date in indicates on what day the time in occurred. 
Your spreadsheet will always display its temperature readings in Celsius. If you prefer Fahrenheit, there is a way for Excel to perform this task for you. Here's how you do it. First, click a space away from your date so we can get some separation. Then go up top and click on the Formulas tab, and then look for more functions. Go to Engineering, and then choose Convert. A pop-up box will appear that will help you accomplish your function. Click on the empty box on the right of number, and then go to your spreadsheet and click the same Celsius reading on that row. Next, click on the empty box to the right of From Unit. In this box, you're telling Excel what the current temperature format is. Type in a quotation mark, the letter C, and then another quotation mark. And then on the box below that, quotation marks, F, quotation mark. Once you're done, click OK. As you can see, Excel has successfully converted C to F. Next, click on the box containing your Fahrenheit reading and move your mouse over the small box to the bottom right of that selected cell. Once your mouse turns into a black cross, left click and keep holding left click down. Now, while you're still holding left click, drag your mouse down to as far as you want to go. Release the left click and you'll automatically reconvert the rows you selected to Fahrenheit as well.